apologize for the delay. Hello, everybody. My name is Christine Marie Quigless, and I'm very excited to invite you to the first day of four yin days during this challenge. Yin yoga is a yoga that is completely passive, where gravity does the work instead of us, but that action of being can be quite challenging. That's why when you're doing yin yoga, expect that you may exert yourself a little bit, but more that's gonna happen is opening. Opening here, opening here, and opening. Typically, this uh, yin targets the lower body. Oh, a lot of opening up here. So if we, if we combine that with the chakra discussion and with how important it is to release blockages, we are reminded that yin is going to be a less aggressive way. So solar plexus would not be twisting necessarily, which is more aggressive. Solar plexus would look like butterfly, which we're going to be doing today. It's going to be just a different way to open up because sometimes we can open a can like this. And sometimes we have to use a can opener or a different form of opening. So this is just another way to diversify, to bring yoga in all of its forms um, into use so that you can keep aggravating, keep finding the things that might be the beliefs or the actual pains that might be holding you back from showing up in your full self in the world. My hair is down because yin is a lot less, um, requires a lot less effort, but I'm going to put it up for the five Tibetan rituals, which we're going to do right now. We're going to do a tiny little warm up because it's still helpful to not do yin cold, completely cold. Uh, before we start, you've got support. You've got your bolsters. You've got your journal in case something comes up. You've got your mat and perhaps you have some support like I do in my little dog. Okay, so we're going to get started with tapping. We're, we've got two feet side by side. Shoulders are down. Arms are open. And let's do it. So one, two. Remember gaze is towards the floor, but chin is level. Four. Keep hitting my window. Five. Close your eyes. Find balance. Okay, let's go to camel. Remember, shoulders are pinning towards the heart. Shoulders are pinning towards the heart. Fingers point down. Let's begin. Inhale, one. I always think of mermaids flipping their hair when they do camel pose. Like you flip your hair back to like do that arch. <laughs> that helps. Okay, now let's go to the J pose. So we're laying on our back. We've got support if we need it. And we make the J and we inhale one. And of course, we have the ujjayi breathing. That's gonna help warm up my body faster. You're welcome to use other breathing. Just make sure it's targeted to the lower back, to this sacral and root chakra area. Okay, fingers are pointing towards feet. Let's begin in tabletop on our first inhale, one. Are these poses getting easier for you? Um, I've been doing them for a while, so 
I can't feel the difference, but I, I remember when I first started and it made such a difference. Whoa, day one from day eight to day 31. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, here we go. Starting with an inhale, upward facing dog. I love downward facing dogs so much. I shouldn't stay here this long. Okay, here we go. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay. And right about here, when I'm doing my five Tibetan rituals at home, I feel such a beautiful openness that I will typically take an arm here. I don't do it on the video because I like to try to keep this a little bit more secular, but I invite you to, when you finish, you can always inhale and um, and let all of the work that you just did, it helps complete it. It helps it find, click its way in, all this energy finds its way to settle into the body and Alm um, helps complete that. Maybe one day we'll do it, but um, it's a bit early here and I don't wanna wake up <laughs> the neighborhood with a giant Alm. Oh. So here we go. We're going to do our first yin pose. Remember, this is about gentleness. You have done something remarkable. It is day five of the challenge and you are showing up. And this is a bit of a reward. But remember that it is just as um, energetic and um, exciting when good things happen that when bad things happen. So I think people come to Yen and they're disappointed that they're not sleeping. Um, but uh, something is happening. So still show up and be present. Um, the breath is not regulated. It is not Ujjayi. Um, but do try to focus the breath towards the belly. Let's begin with our first exercise, Anjaneyasana. If you're hardcore, if you're not a beginner, then um, you can take a block or a bolster and hold it over your head. But for everybody else, um, we're just going to keep it nice and simple. This is going to be our most rigorous pose, but this is also one of the classic yin yoga poses. So we're going to... Um, not elegantly get into this pose. So your toes are facing the short side of the mat. Your knee is bent at what you'd love to have around a 90 degree angle. And that means it's not bending over and it's not bending back because that's the beginning of a split. Remember to go back to day two, grounding. Ground into that right foot. Think of all the points of contact and then how they can expand. You're going to you could consider this Anjane Asana right here. This is a strongly supported Anjane Asana. Where we're going is here. We're going to have um, the back foot. No, we're going to keep the back knee down, but we're going to lean over the leg. And if you want, you can stay square to the mat and hold your arms up. But we're gonna hold this for about two minutes. So remember that the point is not to make it rigorous and aggressive. The point is to be in your comfort zone. So I don't even know where I'm going to go yet. To start, the most basic one, like I said a minute ago, would be to bring your knees a little closer together. And this is the beginning of Anjaneyasana. Hands are still active because they've got to support your wrist. Since your wrist is supporting weight, then you've got to take the precautions for your hands so that you're not hurting your hands and your wrist and your arm. Okay. So find your place of comfort. I think I'm going to, and things are gonna start loosening up. Anjane Asana is about this um, first to second chakra plane. So we're twisted towards the front of the mat. And this is a passive yin Anjane Asana. So we're, I wanted to take it up here and make it a yang, but that's not what we're doing today. So hands on the hips. For me, hands on the hips are gonna work. 
I don't feel like bringing them up. I feel like that's too active for me, for the energy I'm in today. It's 6 a.m. at three o'clock maybe, but not at 6 a.m. Just breathing here. This is the most, like I said, the one that takes the most, I think, concentration. But I'd rather start off hot than cold um, for the following poses. Okay. Okay, that's two. So then we're going to lean forward over gently, gently, gently. Don't be dramatic about this, even though it's really easy to be dramatic about this. And we're going to just uh, flip the toes forward, come to a lunge, and you're just going to step back into a mini, tiny, tiny, tiny plank pose just to reset your hips. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bring the right knee down. The palm, the top, the bottom of the right foot is facing the sky. And we're going to start in our beginner's position. So you're welcome to stay here. We'll do a whole class on I have arrived, I'm home, but not today. So what I will say is that anytime you start a pose, you're doing the pose and let that be enough because sometimes that might be what your body's asking for that day. Listen to your body. You're gonna back it up, back it up, back it up. Finding that lunge with the squared hips. The hips are not open, they're squared. And the time started when we started the pose. So it's up to you to get where you need to be. I mean, you're following me, so it's up to me <laughs> um, so that you can get the most out of these two minutes. I'm literally helping my hips stay square. One side is a lot looser than the other. And so I need to be particularly careful that I don't let um, one side stay too far open. Let it over rotate because then I'm not doing Anjani Asana. But as I breathe as I hold this pose. My hips open up. That's nice. There's so much emotion held in your hips. You really want to help them release so that they're not holding something that could be holding you back. Hmm. Back from what? From being... One more inhale here. Exhale. Let the body flow over the leg. Active hands, cupping that basketball or soccer ball or football. You're going to push back to the beginner's pose. And then you're going to just flip this right toe and come to a very gentle plank. Just to help your hips. A little twist here. Shimmy there. Help your hips find their way. Okay. Now let's go to pigeon. So pigeon is also a hip opener, but remember that something is happening in the hips, but something's also happening outside. So this right arm, if you are if your right side is facing the short side of the mat, then you're going to also get a specific kind of stretch in your um, right hamstring. So I'm going to get a bolster because that's going to be, Yen is filled with bol bolsters. Yen is bolster city. Um, so that I can make sure that I'm gentle and not forcing, meeting my body where it is this morning. So um, remember your pigeon can start from two knees that are practically both facing the short side of the mat, or you can rotate your foot out. Uh, the more you rotate, the more important it is that you flex that foot 
I'm starting with the right side and I'm holding, I'm guiding my body down by moving my left foot farther and farther back. So the hip opening that happened in pigeon, I mean, in Anjaneyasana is happening, but to a much lesser extent. And the greater focus is on this right hamstring. Okay, so you can stay up. That's an option. You can walk your hands, your forearms down to the beginning of Sphinx pose, which we're gonna be doing later. You can sleep your pigeon. And the more cushion you have here, the more you're participating with yin because you don't wanna to stretch too much. And as your body opens, 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 then you can remove the pillows or bolsters or whatever you're using. I'm going to sleep my pigeon. And let's see, we're almost in our final minute. And as I'm melting into this pose, I become more and more aware. Oh, my shoulders are up. Oh, my chest is moving away from my body. It's moving concave. Okay, I'll move it um, a little bit closer if it feels like, like you start to feel the distance between you and the ground in different parts of your body as you open up. Things that I don't think you could feel if you just pushed your body to the place. Like a flower, just let your body open up. Okay. Mm, so good. Okay. Two hands on either side of the body. Walk, 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 walk your body up and bring it around. So here we we're just gonna do a quick intermediate pose called fire log. So you're going to have, and this one is um, explicit, so it's not an option to do it shorter. You're just going to have one, your front leg is parallel to the short side of the mat, I mean the bottom leg, and that's the right leg that we just exercised. And you're going to fire log, so you're going to have your left leg do the same position, but I'm going to put a pillow or two in between. That might be too, that might be too much. Okay. And we're going to just take fire log pose for just a moment. And keeping those, those feet flexed. Hmm. Seating into the spine, rooting to rise through that root chakra, all the way through the crown. Hands on either side. And our feet are flexed, but our energy is not active through the toes because this is yin. So they're flexed, but relaxed. Find that balance. And if you feel like it, you're welcome to, like me, fold forward over your legs, but with a curved back because we want to effort less. Oh, that's a nice thing. Oh yeah, cool. I took my other bolster and I'm wrapping myself over it. Mm. And like I said, this is just a snack pose. We're not gonna stay here long. Mm. Okay, let's go to the next one. So, other side. This time you've got your left foot and remember it could be the, the foot could be completely beside the inner thigh, 
beside the um, groin, it's no problem. But as it opens out where, to where you're comfortable, as it opens out, make sure that when it's parallel, by the time it gets parallel or closer to parallel, like 45 or, or, or higher, between 45 and 90, make sure that uh, you flex that foot, okay? Squaring the hips that you're doing the pose. Bolster, please. Okay. And starting up, and then sleeping your pigeon as you wish. Focus is on keeping the hips square, just like on Janayasana. Sphinx arms, you can hang out here. It might be where your body wants to hang out. Or you can sleep it all the way down. My body's concave, it's a little tight on this side. And because the distance is so far from the earth, I'm going to use the other bolster to close that distance. Because with each point of contact, when your body is connected to something, it can expand more easily. When I talk about grounding, I say these are the initial points of contact that you want to emphasize, but let your foot, let's say the foot is on the ground, let it expand and hug your greatest partner, Mother Earth. And so when you give yourself the luxury of a bolster or a point of contact between you and something that's not touching the ground, it allows that part, let's say in this case, it was my, my belly and chest, they were con concave because I wasn't stretch, I, I wasn't in a position to stretch too far, not yet. Well, when I added the pillow, then they immediately stretched over the pillow and as I relax deeper and deeper into the pose, the pillow will become a hindrance. It'll become an obstacle and I'll have to move it. But I could not get to that same place of relaxation and stretch if I didn't start with the pillow. That's one of the amazing things about yeah. You go beyond what you expected in a graceful way, in a way of ease and elegance. Hmm. Hmm. Make sure your shoulders are down though. Don't do any of that hunching. Just because it's a lot more comfortable doesn't mean you compromise your um, posture, especially if hunching is considered comfortable or normal. Okay, so let's two hands on either side of the mat, push up, walk your hands back. And let's take fire log on the other side. So, And if you'd like, you can also start fire log with a, with a support under your bottom leg. Uh, because as I keep saying, it's more important that you support yourself than it is that you do what I do or make it look like what I'm doing. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, making like a bolster sandwich. As many of you know, I've been practicing since I was 13. So many, many years, many, 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 many years. And it did not look like this when I was 13. <laughs> I could get into the poses. I couldn't sustain them. I had stretch, but no strength. I had to develop the muscles to allow stillness, flow, rather than shaking and striving and straining.
Okay. We'll almost just a few more seconds here. Mm, this is such a good position for acknowledging that breath in the lower back and feeling it expand and contract. Wow. Okay, pushing up. Two hands on either side of the mat, pushing up. And now let's go to Sphinx pose. Do you feel like things are getting easier? Do you feel like, do you feel your hips opening in different ways? There's a much different Anjane Asana hip opening feeling than there is after doing pigeon and fire log. Okay, so we're gonna start in tabletop just to give you a point of beginning. And right here, let's just automatically go down to, um, it's not automatic because I'm telling you what to do. So let's just calmly, easily lay our body down on the ground. And with Sphinx pose, you're, the focus is on this moment right here. So the focus is on, push myself up on the mat a little bit. The focus is on keeping that squareness through the upper body. Um, where your head goes, you can let it hang. And so two hands are parallel facing the short side of the mat. The grip is not active because they're not holding weight. They're just finishing the line of the pose. So they can relax, the, especially because it's the end. Um, the forearms are parallel to each other. The shoulders are square. The heart is resting between these two supportive arms. And the neck, as I said, you can let it hang down. You can complete the, um, you can let the gaze look at the ground, or you can look straight forward. The back legs, the palms of the feet are facing the sky. And it's safer to rotate and let the heels um, relax so that they point to the long sides of the mat rather than to try to force and keep your legs um, so that the heels are facing each other. Um, especially if you are a natural, naturally turned out person, this is gonna feel like uncomfortable, but it's really um, to preserve that lovely, um, muscle that sort of is meshed in your um, hips, then you need to give them a rest. You need to give those muscles a rest. And this is gonna give you that. <sighs> and so noticing whenever you do feel points of tension in the body, going back and letting them relax. I keep finding myself tensing up and then I'm like, oh, relax, relax. Oh boy, it's already 6.30. Oh, but we started about a minute or two late. That's why, okay. Little technical glitch. Live didn't want to live this morning. I'll just take a few more seconds here, about 20 more seconds. Helping our body get what it needs. Mm. It's so cool to breathe in the belly in Sphinx pose because you can feel it expanding across the mat. You can feel the expansion that you're literally doing every time you breathe. Okay, so let's push our butt towards the sky by lunging back. And then you're just gonna walk your feet up, up, up. We don't have time for the fifth pose butterfly. But I think child's pose, yin child's pose is extremely important. I love it. And so we're going to finish with this. So you're just going to, as I was doing it, you can't, if you can't uh, see me, then you don't know what I just did. Um, we're going to, I'm going to bring, I've got my knees together, my shins together, my ankles together, and I'm bringing my butt towards my heels. 
And in so doing, my body relaxes over my knees and unfolds like a waterfall around my knees. And so then it's supporting, it's supporting my heart, my knees, my heart is resting on my knees. My shoulders are waterfall, just splashing, just spanning over my knees. I'm breathing into my back. My hands are facing the sky. My shoulders are folded over, which means that they are, they're not hunched. There's still that emphasis towards keeping them away from my ears and towards my heart. But they're not, because of this pose, they cannot be, you know, pulled back too far. Your bolster is really useful to put between your heart and your legs or between your butt and your heels. Let me demonstrate that. Stay in your pose. Um, but I think it's really helpful to have this because some people may be uncomfortable in child's pose as it is, as I was describing it. So this is one place of support. And this is the other place. If it can reach, you're also welcome to let your third eye rest on the ground. Let it commune with earth. Let it power up. Help it find humility by not being on top for a moment. Okay. So let's roll up by moving our, by pushing into the tops of our feet and doing a mini spine roll. The head is the last thing to come up, rolling through the spine, up, 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 up. Your shoulders are going to roll up. And hmm, that's complete for today. You've completed day five. Today we focused on yin. Do not forget to recommit to your intention. What is your intention? What is your devotion for this 30-day challenge? This is a challenge, a sunrise challenge, dedicated to unleashing the magic of yoga. The, the offer, the invitation I'm going to give you, especially because we're in our five days and we're starting to gain some purchase in this um, process in this mountain that we're climbing, I invite you to also journal at the end of the day and notice what magic you are unleashing my days every single day has been transformationally different and it is a magic beyond what i could have expected um i'm getting so much more out of this challenge day by day than what i expected and definitely not in proportion to what i'm putting in but that's the thing is like it's not about what you're putting in. It's about simply showing up. And when you show up, the magic can happen. When you show up, the miracles can happen. Um, and without looking. In Course in Miracles, they say, um, infinite patience speeds up the miracle. Thank you for joining us today. Wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace.